They're so bloody pathetic, it's almost charming. Welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 weakest anime villains. Wait a minute, we're supposed to be chasing her, not helping her. You better hand over that box right now. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the anime antagonists that are lacking in both physical ability as well as constitution. Whether they're despicable or entertaining, they're weaklings all the same. Bless their little hearts. Get ready for some light spoilers and some disappointed parents down the line. So, it's the whole game. It's your fault we ended up in here. Number 10, Zorzal El Caesar. Gate. So, <laughs> this prince is all about indulgence, living life without consequence while making the occasional visit to the slave market. That is, until he makes the mistake of taking modern Japanese citizens. <laughs> After the JSDF storms the palace in order to free their people, Caesar gets himself a rather rude awakening when all of his forces are instantly shot down by gunfire. The cathartic peak of this comes as the young female soldier Kuribayashi beats the ever-loving shit out of him with just a bare hands. Now that's what we call a royal treatment. Number 9, the Rubber Robo Gang, Metabots. We should be formulating evil plans to take over the world, not stealing bowls of noodles. Well, petty thievery is kind of evil, wouldn't you agree? While their loss ratio may not be as high as another rather infamous set of thieves, this latex-coated gang of rare metal hunters still lend themselves to some spectacular failures. I didn't know we'd be row battling today, so I left Spidars attacking Metaparts at home. Despite being armed with some powerful Metabots of their own, there's still no match for Metabi and his Metafighter, Icky. Kiss your butt! Goodbye! As you can guess, they contribute more as comic relief to the series, which isn't that surprising given their crazy fashion sense was only matched by their incredible code names. I mean, Sea Slug, Gil Gil, Squid Guts, Shrimp Lips, it's just roll off the tongue, really. No, my name is not Tuna Head. It's Sea Slug of the Rubber Robo Gang! Number 8 Carter Issue. Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans. It's judgment day for these savages, so don't show them any mercy! Just goes to show that if you want to pilot a mobile suit, you'd best be able to play it fast and loose. Otherwise, you'll end up like Carter, due to being sheltered her whole life and raised on Galahorn's brand of Kool-Aid. This knight was woefully unprepared to handle the grit of real battle. Well, I was only moments away from dying on the battlefield! Me, of all people! Meanwhile, my precious subordinates are being slaughtered out there! Her obsession with fair fights and tradition led to her losing both of her encounters with Tekadan, the second of which ended with Mikazuki absolutely crushing her. Broken and humiliated, Carter's end was a lot like her life. Inconsequential. Ato. Number 7, Shinji Mato. Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works. Huh? You can look anywhere along the Fate franchise's multiple timelines and find countless examples of this master acting like a prick. Though we like to think his appearance in this particular incarnation of the Fifth Holy Grail War showcased all the reasons why he's a prick. <laughs> Abusive, cowardly, lecherous, the only reason he was able to get as far as he did was because he had a manipulator like Kirei backing him up. 
Ah, well, at least he gets his comeuppance courtesy of Gilgamesh turning him into a living vessel. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That almost makes up for the events of Fate Zero. Number six, Spandam. One Piece. No way! There! Here! Look at it this way. If someone as pathetic as this guy can rise the ranks of the Navy, then anyone has a shot at making it in life. As the commander of the CP9, Spandam was often found hiding behind the elite assassins put in his charge, using his own authority to punish and put down those who could otherwise turn him into mincemeat, evident from his mistreatment of Robin during the events of Ennis Lobby. You too! <laughs> Don't get cocky with me, understand? Thankfully for all his bravado and position of power, he didn't serve as much of a shield when he ended up getting his spine snapped. Clutch. <laughs> Number 5, Nuke Saku. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. Dio has many terrifying creatures in service to him. Nuke Saku is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Despite having vampiric blood flowing through his veins, as well as the ability to turn himself into a woman, he didn't manage to even last a minute against Jotaro. No matter which guys he assumed, this pint-sized bloodsucker still ended up suffering the same fate as those who messed with the grumpiest Jojo. A star platinum punch right to the face. <laughs> Say what you will about the likes of Manish Boy and Alessi, at least they put up some kind of resistance. <laughs> Number 4, The Jigglebutt Gang, Fairy Tale. Despite having no end of rival mages to fight, as well as numerous filler villains coming their way, there's just no topping this dastardly group of criminals in terms of suckitude, whose main method of offense involved them unleashing magically powered farts. <laughs> Try point blank. Ecstasy. Their ludicrous antics managed to give them the slip against Natsu and company for a while, even scoring a surprise win against Eza with a lucky blow. That being said, there was only so much Fletchwins could do when going up against the flames of a dragon. Seriously, why were these guys a thing? Number three, Dr. Gel, Space Dandy. We have no choice. We must send the whole fleet to attack. Google Seventh, move out! It can be hard making a living as a gorilla with a flashy taste in clothes, especially if you're in service to a nightmarish creature who constantly tasks you with hunting down the crew of the Aloha Oe. Dr. Gel may be a genius and have a pretty dapper wardrobe, but alas, his mission to bring down Dandy always ends in failure. This is bad! Oh, hey, hold on a second! Give me some of those sick beats! If he's not left kicked to the curb, then he ends up losing his life in the process of his pursuit. Explosions, black holes, comedic timing. It seems like the universe itself is set on ruining Gel's day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, sexy. Number two, Emperor Pilaf, Dragon Ball. When your biggest claim to villainy is that you inadvertently started Dragon Ball GT, then you know you're a far cry from claiming the top spot as the franchise's bad guy. Get away from me! You're three times my size! No! I wish you were a little kid again, then I could really teach you a lesson or two. This so-called emperor has only managed to serve as a comedic obstacle for Goku to occasionally sidestep in his pursuit of the Dragon Balls. This was only extended in sequel series like Super, where his incompetency has only intensified as the years have gone by. <laughs> Number 1. Team Rocket 
Pokemon. Team Rocket, let's fight! Let's fight! Whoa, that's it! <laughs> For over a thousand episodes, this trio have hunted down Pikachu across the globe. And each and every time, they have failed like no others can. No matter the disguises, no matter how crazy the contraptions, it all falls apart after they find themselves getting zapped with Pikachu's personal thunderbolts. From there, it's business as usual as they are sent blasting off into the stratosphere, only to appear an episode later ready to start the cycle over again. <laughs> Full points for remaining determined in the face of defeat, but after 20 years, don't you think you guys should take a break? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.